Welcome to Warbirds and the Combat Qualification Arena Mission Training Video. Warbirds is a realistic combat simulation of World War II aerial combat. This video is to show you how, using the Combat Qualification Arena, you can practice and be ready to take on the veterans of Warbirds, some of which have been flying Warbirds for over 10 years. Good luck and good hunting. After the main Warbird screen is the Check Out, Check Ride screen. Check Out is a training mission to show new players the controls needed for flying warbirds. Check Ride is for experienced warbirds players and tests your ability to fly combat missions in warbirds. Separate movies of each of the events are available on www.totalsims.com. You must choose one of these events or double click on Not Now to continue. You can always get to these missions from the Training tab. You will only get access to the offline missions after you complete one of these two events. The first thing to do is to make sure your controls work. Notice there is a setting button at both the bottom of this screen and on the right of this screen. Click on either settings tab and go to the settings page. There are many options and settings a player can adjust from this page from video, sound, colors, controller, input mapper, and more. Before you fly, the first thing to do is make sure your controls work. On the settings menu, click on controller settings. Notice that my joystick is identified in this list. You must have your joystick plugged in before you start Warbirds. In this controller settings screen, I have opened the top three axis listings. The x-axis is identified on the screen currently. The x-axis is for bank, right or left, or roll. The y-axis is for joystick and nose, up or down, or pitch. The z-axis is for yaw, left or right, nose movement, or rudder. As I move the joystick, the box on the bottom center of the page, just above the load defaults button, shows the movement of the stick. In this screen, the joystick has been moved slightly right, roll right, and you can see the center crosshair in the box is slightly right of center. Pull the stick back. Elevator up, nose up, causes the crosshairs to move downward as shown in this screen in the same box. Throttle movement can be tested by moving your throttle full and back and seeing the black line on the right vertical of the box move up and down. Rudder movement can be tested in the same way by observing the movement of the red line in the top center of the box as you move your rudder control. Find View Horizontal and View Vertical in the Controls list. Make sure that they are off or your views will not work properly. Important! You must press Save Changes to apply any changes that you have made. Now open Settings Input Mapper. At the bottom middle of this input mapper page, you will see the key lookup button. If you press key lookup and then any button on the keyboard or joystick, the program will tell you what that button is programmed for. I pressed key lookup and my trigger and the program says fires primary weapon, which is correct. I pressed key lookup again and pressed another button on my joystick which I have set to fire secondary weapons which is how I drop bombs. Next I'm going to set up a key to look up. Looking up is needed in a dogfight. Find the command you want in the edit selected stick set list of view, gunnery and bombing, flight or miscellaneous. Open the list of view commands by clicking on the down arrow. Choose and click on look up. Go slightly right to control 2 and press the press to change control button. Press the button on the keyboard or joystick that you want to cause the view to look up. 
I chose a key on the front of my joystick for lookup. Button 19 is shown here. To check that the button was set, press key lookup and the button on the joystick you think you set to look up. The program will confirm you set the button correctly. Click OK. Be sure to click on Save Changes. Close all the setting pages by clicking X in the top right corners. Now click on the Play Online button. Enter your login and password. Click Save Password and Auto Get Arenas. Press Login and you will initially be sent to the Combat Qualification Arena. Once you log into the Combat Qualification Arena, you must first establish an online handle. This handle will follow you your entire Warbirds career, so make it one you would like others to call you. This handle can only be six lowercase letters, may have dashes but no numbers. Examples of Warbirds handles include Pappy B, P A P P Y B, Bomber, B O M B R dash, and Light, L I G H T dash. I tried A V I A T dash for aviation, but that handle was taken. Next, I tried AV-ATE, and that one worked. Once you log into the Combat Qualification Arena, the Help menu will open. You will also see a pop-up screen that shows your current rank and score. Click X to close both screens. This screen is the tower screen. In the top left, you can choose the color you want to fight for. In this arena, players can only choose the green color. The red color is enemy aircraft. Below the color selection is the My Field drop-down. Here you can choose to launch from any green field on the map. You can also click on any green field on the map and be assigned to that field. Toward the bottom of this column, below the Vehicle Information button, is the list of aircraft. You can click on the Bomber button just above the Vehicle Information button and open the Bomber list. Choose the P-51 Mustang. Using the large plus button left of the map, you can zoom the map and use the mouse to move the map within the window. Press the green Go Aircraft button in the bottom right of the screen to go fly. Press Control and then H together to change the colors of the heads up display, HUD, in the top right and left of the screen. I have changed my HUD color to white for easier reading. You can look up the many commands of Warbirds by pressing Control and F1 together. Find the command you are looking for in the list and click on it. The command is implemented and the key is identified in the chat window in the bottom left of the screen. Press F1 to open the map. Use Shift left bracket or right bracket to zoom and unzoom the map. Your position is identified by the circle and arrow just south of FS1. Press F1 two more times to close the map. Zeppelins make good first targets. Note the red icons above the enemy Zepp. The number tells you the range in hundreds of feet. Use the Z key to zoom the cockpit view for accurate shooting. Use the fire button to shoot, but don't run into the zeppelins. Unzoom using the V key. Always keep the enemy in view by using the view keys. 
Just as we set the look up on my joystick, I set the hat switch on the joystick for look left, look right, look forward up, and look back views. Find the enemy aircraft formations. They are other red icons on the map and in the sky. Attack using the old fighter pilot technique. One pass and haul or backside. Learn to intercept enemy aircraft by getting inside of their turns. Do not get in a tail chase. Most aircraft have similar speeds and are hard to catch from behind. Highlight an enemy aircraft by clicking on it with your mouse. On that highlighted aircraft, you will see a white line with a targeting box. Aim your guns at that box and you will shoot down the enemy. Press quit flight in the bottom right corner and go back to the tower screen. In the tower screen, you can choose other aircraft. Pick the P-38J from the fighter aircraft list. Click on the vehicle information box. A separate screen opens with a rotating aircraft and descriptions of the aircraft. Close the vehicle information box. Open the weapons loadout drop down menu in the center below the map. Note the different weapons mixes the P-51D can carry. Set defuse to 10 seconds. The next mission is to hit the hangar at field FS-4 with rockets. Using the map, you can see that the initial heading is approximately 120 degrees. Check your intel on field FS-4. It is important to know where the targets are on the target field. The layout of your target field, FS-4, is just like your current field, FS-1. Click the circled airplane icon to the left of the map to see the field layout. Note the position of the hangar, our first target. Our second mission target will be the two ammo bunkers on the south side of the runway, shown as U-shaped bunkers. Press the green airplane icon on the bottom right of the map to launch. Press F1 to open the map and turn toward FS4. Press X for auto trim on level when the turn is complete. Press the backspace key until you see RCK6100 in the weapons indicator on the left side of the cockpit. You will now launch rockets when you press your fire secondary weapon button. Press Z to zoom to see your target and V to unzoom. As you line up on the hangar, you will see a small X under the gun sight. Press the secondary fire button multiple times when the X is on the target. Rockets away! Target destroyed! Press Control E to jump to the outside view to see the damage. That is how a rocket strike should work. The small targeting X is a training aid only available in this arena. Press Quit Flight to return to the tower screen. On the second mission, we will use bombs on the two ammo bunkers south of the runway. Press the green airplane icon on the bottom right of the map to launch. Press backspace twice until you see B52100 in the weapons indicator. Press F1 to use the map to turn toward FS4. Lower your nose and use Z to zoom to find your target. The targets are the ammo bunkers. We are going to try to get both in one pass. Notice the targeting X again. Press secondary release when the X is on each target. Bombs away.
Ten second defuse. Good hits. Way to go. To close and capture a field in Warbirds, you must destroy all structures at an airfield. Practice, practice, practice. Then come to the main arena. Press the red parachute log out icon to go to the splash screen. Click play online, click the main arena line and press log in. The best way to survive in the main is to find an online squadron to fly with. This is the Atoll terrain. It is one of about 12 different terrains we run in the main. Terrains change every two weeks and they are called TODs or Tour of Duty. To communicate with players only in your color, press the slash key and type in the long black box that appears just above the buffer. To chat with all players, all colors, open the radio bar by pressing shift and slash and you should be on the second aircraft radio and should be on channel 100. Do you see my chat in the buffer about the S3 this Sunday? INT provides free in-game voice chat too. With this chat, you can communicate without typing to your other squadron members. Download and install from www.teamspeak.com the TeamSpeak 3 product for either PC or Mac computers. This is a screen you will add the IP to. The IP is 108.166.1. 186.40 colon niner niner eight niner. The password is I E N T twenty eleven. Use the setup wizard to configure TeamSpeak and make sure to set a button on your joystick to push to talk, not voice activation. For even more Warbirds learning, you can request human instructor pilot training in the training arenas on Tuesday and Thursday evenings at 2100 Eastern US time. Practice, practice, practice and you might just be an ace in Warbirds. Good luck. Wild Bill, out.